All right, section four, let's roll. Start with some vocabulary. First, we have multiplicative inverse and reciprocals. So a multiplicative inverse would be when there's a two numbers products equal one. So that would be like five over three times three over five. When you multiply those together, they'd equal one. So they are inverses, multiplicative inverses. If I multiply them, they turn into one. Reciprocals are technically the exact same thing, but usually when we think of reciprocals, it's, not, it's more than just a fraction. So eight would be one eighth, and or the reciprocal of eight would be one eighth, and the reciprocal of one eighth would be eight. So technically when I multiply those together, they would still equal one. So reciprocals and multiplicative inverses are technically the same thing. <clears throat> so here's the inverse property of multiplication. So the product of a number and its multiplicative inverse is 1. So for every a and b, there is a b and a, and you multiply them together, they equal 1. 3 times 4 and 4 and 3, the multiply together equals 1. All right, so let's find the multiplicative of inverse of 6 over 7. So the product of that, if I flip it and put 7 over 6, multiply them together, and they equal 1. Therefore, the multiplicative inverse or reciprocal of 6 over 7 is 7 sixths. The multiplicative inverse of 3 and 2 fifths. So first, we're going to have to change this into an improper fraction. So you'd multiply three times, 5 times 3 would be 15, plus 2 would be 17. From there, I'm going to take the reciprocal, which would be 17 over 4 or 5 over 17. When I multiply those, that would be equal 1. So therefore, the reciprocal of 5 and 2 fifths is 5 over 17. All right, you try. Go. All right, so I'm just going to write the opposites of this. 9 over 4. Multiply those out. We come out to 36 over 36 equals 1. So that would be 9 over 4. Let's see if I put it in the right place. Oh, good. All right, multiply this, or turn this into a fraction first. It would be 7 times 2 is 14, plus 4 is going to be 18. So I'd have 18 over 7. Flip those. Flip those numbers. It would be 7 over 18. All right, so dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by, oh, sorry. If I had 6 divided by 2 equals 3. Now, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. It's multiplicative inverse. This is true for any rational number. So you can use the reciprocal and multiply. So you can, this is where that multiplicative inverse comes from. When you see a division symbol, you can use the multiplicative inverse. Inverse. So multiply, multiplicative, inverse. Comes out with the same result. So that's what they're saying here. To divide by a fraction, multiply it by its multiplicative inverse. So if I have one fourth divided by five sevenths, I will take one fourth and times it by seven over five, which is the reciprocal of this. And then that's fairly easy. One times seven is seven, four times five is 20. All right, write the quotient in simplest form. So we're going to flip it, multiply it, and then reduce it. All right, so first we're going to use the multiplicative inverse. So I flip this or flip 3 over 10 and turn the division symbol to multiplication. Then I'm going to multiply 4 times 10, which will be 40, and 5 times 3, which is 15. Oh, whoops, never mind. Let's reduce it first. That would be so much smarter. So let's reduce, we can divide both of these, 5 and 10, by their greatest common factor of 5. So I can divide by 5, divide by 5, make that smaller before we multiply it. I love this concept. So that would put me 8 over 3, or 2 and 2 thirds. All right, you try. All right, so let's take it out here. So 3 over 8. We're going to use the multiplicative inverse. I'm going to do 6 over 5 and change the sign here to a multiplication. 6 over 5. I can reduce this by 2 on each one of these. So this can go to 3 over 4. So that's going to go 9 over 20. 
All right, find the quotient in its simplest form. Well, they didn't technically put this over one, but technically it is. So we will find, write, rewrite three as three over one. So we keep the division sign for now, so three over one. Now we use the multiplicative inverse of three over one, which is one third. So we rewrite it, change the sign to multiplication and flip these two. Now we can either reduce, doesn't look like we're gonna need, be able to. So we multiply them out, five times one, six times three, five over 18, there's my answer. You try. All right, so we're gonna do the same steps, five over 12 divided by 10 over one. Now we'll do the multiplicative inverse, five over 12 times one over 10. I can reduce that way it looks like, so that can go to two, that can go to one, will be one over 24, ugly 24, but it's still there. Let's go, correct. <coughs> All right, write this quotient in simplest form. Well, both of these we're gonna have to turn into uh, improper fractions. So we multiplied three times four is 12, plus, that equals 14 plus two. Three times nine is 18 plus one, oh, three times nine, sorry, is 27 plus one is 28. It's a negative, don't forget the negative sign. Don't be like me and forget those. Keep that negative 28. <clears throat> All right, from here, we're going to get the multiplicative inverse because I can't divide by that. So I'm gonna flip these two and change the sign, but keep the negative symbol. I can reduce angles and angles. So we can reduce both ways. So one half and one third. So it gives me three over two and they were multiplied. They forgot to keep the negative sign here when they did this. So don't forget the negative symbol. So there should have been a negative symbol in front of that and that should be moved over. So don't forget the negative symbol. And there it is, three over two negative. Pause this one, give it a shot. Okay, so first we have to turn them into improper fractions. So this will be 12 plus three is gonna be 15 over four divided by Two times eight is 16 plus five is gonna be 21 over eight. <clears throat> Flip those, so 15 over four times, let's get the reciprocal here, eight over 21. There's no negative symbols here. Nope. All right, so this can go divide by two. So two, oh, sorry, one half. I can go to one half. Those are divisible by three, so this can go to five and this can go to seven so one times seven is seven and that's going to be ten ten sevenths all right write this quotient in simplest form so multiplying by the multiplicative inverse first we'll flip these over and then we can just multiply across oh sorry reduce i love this uh, Reduce out the common factors, so these 5 tenths goes to 1 half, 8 over 16 goes to 1 half, and we can cancel out the y's, so that leaves me with 2 x's over 2. Or simply, you could actually cancel those out as well, and put it to just x. Pause this one, give it a quick try. Alright, so first we're going to flip it. So I'm gonna go 6m and 10p times, I'm gonna flip this one here, so four over 9m. All right, so the opposite here, m's can cancel. I can reduce three and nine to two over three. I can reduce this one into five and two, and just dividing by two, dividing by three. So let's rewrite this out. So I have two over five P times four, or sorry, sorry oh, times two over three. So that's gonna be four over 15 P. Yep. 
All right, how many gallons of gas are needed to travel 78 and 3 fourths miles if a car gets 25 and a half miles per gallon? All right, so first we need to find out how many gallons, so we divide the miles by the gallons, so 75, or 78 and 3 fourths divided by 25 and a half. We'll first have to write them as improper fractions. Then we'll do the multiplicative reciprocal, so we're just flipping these two. From there, we're going to reduce out as much as we possibly can. So this one was divisible by 17. Make life easy. So it ended up being 105 over 34, or 3 and 3 quarters. We're not done. Or 3 and 3 34s. The gallons of gas are how many are needed. So dimensional analysis lets us examine the units, miles to the gallon. Divide out the units means gallons is what's left. So the results are expressed in gallons. This agrees with our answer at the, of how many gallons of gas. And I'll let you skip that one.